EFI? Well, it can seem a little intimidating. With an endless array of terminals, connectors, crimpers, and deep pinning tools, well, it can leave your head spinning. But here at Holly, we want to help. After all, we're car people too. With so many manufacturers using such a wide variety of connectors and sensors, it can be hard to keep up with them all. Let alone try to remember which design uses which crimper or deep pinning tool. In this video, I'll show you how to identify the different connectors found on your Coyote harness. I'll also show you what tools you'll need to deep pin them and just how to crimp them. Let's start with the Holly EFI J connector. You'll find these connectors used on the Holly HP, Avenger, and Terminator ECU, as well as the Dominator and Terminator X ECUs. The technical name for this terminal is the Tyco Super Seal 1.0. I really like this design, mainly because releasing the terminals from the connector body is super simple. You'll notice the two small white tabs on one side and a larger white tab on the opposite side of the connector. To release the terminals, simply push in on the larger tab with a small screwdriver. You should hear it quick, and the two smaller tabs should now be protruding from the connector body. The locking tab holding the pins in is now disengaged, and you're able to remove, replace, or swap any of the pins within the connector by simply pulling them out. A firm tug may be required to remove them. Once you have all the pins back in where you'd like them, simply press down on both the protruding tabs until they're flush again with the connector body and locked in place. To properly crimp a Tyco Super Seal 1.0, you'll need a terminal designed for the wire gauge that you're using, as well as a special crimping tool. These crimpers are great since you can swap out the jaws for other jaws that allow you to crimp Deutsch, Amp Pin, Amp Lug, Weather Tight, and more. If you're using these crimpers on our ECU pins, you'll need to remove the support assembly that's attached to the side of the crimpers. Begin by stripping approximately 3 16 of an inch of insulation from your wire. Slide the strip portion of your wire into the terminal, then place the terminal into your crimping tool. Squeeze the tool until it's completely crimped and releases. One of the most popular connectors found in the Coyote harness is the Metropac 150. Coyote harnesses use the Metropac 150 for their wideband O2 sensor, the injector harness, input output connector, power tap, as well as the coil to main harness connector. To crimp the Metropac 150s, I like to use this tool. This crimper can also be used for the weather pack as well as the Metropac 150 and 280 terminals. Once again, the more you spend on the tool, typically the better crimp you're gonna get out of them. Start by installing the appropriate size seal onto your wire. The seals are color coded to work with different wire gauges and make sure that the ribs are faced away from the terminal. Strip approximately 3 16 of insulation from your wire. You don't have to twist the wire, just leave it as strands. Insert the terminal into your crimper, lining up the terminal with the appropriate jaws, then squeeze. With the lower cost crimpers, you'll have to do the process twice, once for the wire and once for the seal. With the higher dollar units though, typically they do it all in one shot. Now we can install the terminals into our connector. The terminal should only be able to go into the connector one way. Make sure that the tab on the terminal is facing up and pointed towards the connector's locking tab. Then insert the terminal into the connector until you hear it quick. Be sure that the seal is fully seated in the connector hole to prevent any contaminants from entering. Then install the TPA to the back of your connector. To release the Metropac 150 terminals from the connector body, you'll need a deep pinning tool such as this, or you can use a safety pin or even a paper clip that's about 30 thousandths in diameter. You can use your fingers or a small screwdriver to remove the TPA. The TPA provides strain relief and prevents the terminals from being pulled out of the connector body. Now locate the small square cutout in the connector near the top of the terminal. You can find it on the same side as the connector retaining clip. Insert your deep pinning tool or paper clip into the small square cutout and press firmly. The tool will travel a few millimeters then come to a stop. Once the tool is seated, firmly pull on the wire and terminal to remove it. If you plan to reuse your terminal, you'll need to pry up slightly on the locking tab found on the terminal. This ensures that the terminal will lock back into place once it's reinstalled into the connector body. Ford also uses sensors with the Delphi GT150 connector design. You can find this style of connector used on Coyote's oil, fuel, four-wire IAC, as well as the VVT connections. The GT150 design uses slightly smaller terminals than the Metropac 150 and comes in two designs, a push to seat 
as well as a pull to seat style. The GT150 push to seat design is crimped just like the Metropac 150, but uses a different crimping tool. I found this one online. The GT150 connectors also use a TPA for strain relief. However, it has what's referred to as a PLR, or primary locking reinforcement. This lock goes on the front of the connector to help secure the terminals. To depin the GT150 push to lock design, you first need to remove the TPA from the back of the connector. You can use your fingers or even a small screwdriver to do this. Then you'll need to remove the POR from the front of the connector. You can do this with a small knife, but I find it works best to use the fingernails of my thumb and middle finger. Place the fingernails on either side just below the base of the POR and pull to remove it. Now we can see the locking mechanism. Use a small knife or pick to raise the plastic locking tab up and release the terminal. Be careful that you don't lift it too far and break the tab though. With the locking tab raised, you can pull on the wire to remove the terminal. When you're installing a new terminal, pay special attention to the orientation of the terminal. If you look closely, you'll see a small cutout in the terminal where the tab that we released earlier catches. Make sure that the tab on the connector and the cutout on the terminal are lined up. Then press the terminal and wire into the appropriate slot until it locks. Reinstall the POR to the front of the connector and the TPA to the rear of the connector and you're done. Most of our newer wiring harnesses utilize the push to seat GT150 design, but some older harnesses as well as our smart coils use the pull to seat design. The pull to seat GT150 assembles just a little bit differently. They don't use a seal crimped to the terminal and instead have a seal built into the back of the connector. You first have to run the wire through the seal and through the connector. Then go ahead and crimp the terminal to the wire. Line up the tab on the terminal with a slot found in the connector body. Then simply pull on the wire to lock it into the connector. If you're wiring the manifold air temp, cam, two wire IAC, or the mass airflow sensor on your Coyote engine, you'll be dealing with amp seal connectors. You can use the same tool that we used earlier for the Tyco Super Seal connectors. Install the appropriate seal onto the wire with the ribs facing away from the terminal. Strip approximately 3 16 of an inch of insulation from your wire. Then place the terminal into the tool and partially close it to hold the terminal in place. Insert the stripped wire into the contact area and squeeze the handle tightly until the tool releases. The crimper will only release once the tool is fully closed and the terminal is crimped completely. To install the wire and terminal, verify that the wedge lock on the connector is in the open position. Then press the terminal into the correct cavity until you hear a click. Verify that the terminal is in place, then lock it in place by pressing down on the wedge lock to complete the assembly. To remove amp seal terminals from the connector body, you'll first need to disengage the wedge lock. Use a small pick or a depinning tool between the terminal and locking tab. Pry the locking tab away from the terminal while gently pulling on the wire until it releases from the connector body. Another connector you'll find on our Coyote engine harnesses is the Molex design. The CAN bus, CTS, and NOx sensors all use this design. To crimp the Molex design terminals, you'll need a good crimping tool, like this one from MSD. Begin by installing the seal onto your wire. Make sure that the ribs are faced away from the terminal. Next, remove 3 16 of an inch of insulation from your wire. Open the tool and insert the terminal into the correct jaw. Lightly squeeze the handles of the crimper to keep your terminal in place. Then insert the stripped end of your wire into the terminal and squeeze. Release the crimper and inspect your crimp for quality. Repeat the process using the correct die to crimp the seal. To assemble a Molex connector, first make sure that the locking tab found on the front of your connector is disengaged. You can use a depinning tool or a small screwdriver to pry up on the locking tab until it's disengaged. Slide the terminal in until the spring tab engages. Then press down on the locking tab on the front of the connector to prevent it from coming loose. To depin a terminal from a Molex style connector, you'll either need a good pick or a depinning tool. Use the pick to pry up on the lock and remove it completely. Then insert the pick between the terminal and the connector body. Once the pick makes contact with the plastic locking tab inside the connector, pry the tab away from the terminal while pulling gently on the wire to remove the terminal from the connector body. Another type of connector you'll find on the Coyote engines is the Yazaki connector. They use it for the TPS sensor. To remove a terminal from a Yazaki style connector, first remove the TPA from the back of the connector with your fingers or a small screwdriver. Insert a depinning tool. Yazaki recommends this tool, 
but I found that the Delphi ED pinning tool works just as well. Insert the tool into the square cutouts just above the terminal on the front of the connector. Press the tool in until it stops, then pry upwards while pulling on the wire to remove the terminal. Crimping a Yazaki style terminal requires a special crimper or die set, but I found that you can get by using these MSD crimpers. Start by installing a seal onto your wire, positioning the ribs away from the terminal. Strip the insulation from the wire and insert the terminal into the crimpers. Squeeze the tool to complete the crimp on the wire, then reposition and crimp the seal. To assemble the connector, install the terminal with the tabs facing up towards the locking mechanism on the connector itself. Slide it in until it clicks into place, then position and make sure the seal is completely seated. Don't forget to install the TPA and you're finished. The last sensor I want to mention is the crank sensor. Coyote engines utilize the Furukawa type connector for their crank sensors. Crimping the Furukawa RFW terminals can be done with our Metropac crimpers instead of purchasing the high dollar Furukawa tool. Install a seal onto the wire in the correct direction, then strip the insulation from your wire. Insert the terminal into the tool and lightly squeeze to hold it in place while you lay the wire onto the terminal. Squeeze the crimper to attach the wire, then reposition the tool to crimp your seal. To assemble a Furukawa connector, make sure that the tabs on the terminal are facing up towards the lock on the connector body. Slide the terminal into the connector body until you hear a distinct click. Then install the wedge lock on the front of the connector. Make sure the groove in the lock lines up with the slot found in the connector body, then push it to lock it in place. To release the Furukawa terminal from the connector body, first remove the locking tab found on the front of the connector. Now using a small pick, pry the plastic locking tab away from the terminal while at the same time pulling on the wire connected to the terminal that you want to remove. For convenience, we offer main harness connector kits. They include the terminals, connectors, seals, and locks. They're a perfect choice for replacing those broken or worn out connectors on your harness. I hope this video helps take some of the guesswork out of your next wiring job. If you have a Hemi or LS engine and would like to know more about the connectors found on them, check out our other great wiring how-to videos at holly.com.